Hello and welcome to the Fast Track Travel Clinic with me, Simon Calder. And let's start with one of the many questions we get about frequent flyer programs, and in particular, the problems collectors face when trying to trade in their points. Sharon Pierce from Cape Town has many thousands of Voyager miles with South African Airways. For four months, I've tried to book a flight to either London or New York City with the miles without success. Sharon, I can almost hear the chorus of agreement from the loyal customers of other airlines. Times are tough in the aviation business, and one way to respond is by cutting back capacity and filling more seats on each flight. Good for the planet, but unhelpful for people like you seeking to redeem points for the promised free flights. South African Airways says all awards are subject to capacity control. In other words, on flights where every seat can be sold, SAA, like other carriers, is unlikely to make it easy to travel free. Jennifer Davidson is one of many British expatriates who've chosen to retire somewhere even sunnier than the UK, in her case, Thailand. But later this year, Jennifer plans to come home for a short visit. Would I be liable to pay for medical care if I was taken ill? I'm 77 and unable to find a reliable insurance company to provide travel cover. Jennifer, a question that crops up more and more as retirees decide to move a long way from home to countries where their pension stretches further. But when you return home, your entitlement to free hospital treatment is based on residence in the UK, not your nationality. If you're a British state pensioner who's lived in the UK for 10 years or more in the past, you will be covered for treatment that arises during your visit, including for pre-existing conditions. But you'll need to bring documents that show payment of your UK state pension. Next, Caroline Alsept from Arizona's capital, Phoenix, plans to travel widely in Europe with her niece and wonders... Should we buy a Eurail pass? A simple question, Caroline, with a rather more complex answer. It all depends where you want to go and how much freedom you need to change your mind. Rail is the most relaxed and rewarding way to explore most of Europe, with connections from the north of Scotland and Scandinavia to the south of Spain and Italy. The Eurail Global Pass, which is available to people only resident outside Europe, offers unlimited travel in 23 countries. Both of you can travel in first class for 15 days for under €1,000. That's about $1,200. If you're the sort of person who likes to think, forget Vienna, let's go to Venice instead, then it's just what you need. But if you have a clear idea about where you want to go and how long you want to spend in each location, then booking ahead is the best plan. You'll save money and hassle. Many express trains in Europe now demand advance reservations even from passengers travelling on Eurail passes. Finally, Hilton Barreto in Kuwait wonders why, after each flight, cabin crew collect the in-flight headphones. Can't I just keep them in the seat pockets? Hilton, this is one question I didn't have to seek any opinions for, because my first job in travel was cleaning out planes at Gatwick Airport here in London. And trust me, you wouldn't want to allow anything that might touch your ears to be in contact with some of the things I found in seat pockets. So the headphones are collected at the end of each flight, sent to a reprocessing point to be cleaned, repaired and have the ear pads replaced. Good thing too. Whatever your travel quandary, email fasttrack at bbc.com. For now, from me, Simon Calder, goodbye and see you next time.